at her September 9, 1998 inauguration as Oswego's 10th president, Deborah Stanley proclaimed that Oswego is a place where students can find their home and reach their dreams. If you were able to poll the students who lived and breathed the Oswego experience over the past 150 years, you'd find that although separated by time, they would agree with President Stanley's sentiment. For they all shared an experience rooted in self-discovery of building lifelong relationships with those around them, surrounded by the spirit of opportunity and the hope of developing the capacity to make both their community and the world a better place. All of this blended together against the magnificent backdrop of Lake Ontario. Like the SUNY Oswego we know today, the relationship between 19th century students and the faculty was a special one. Faculty commitment and student engagement has always been one of the signatures of the school over its 150 year history. Whether listening to Dr. Mary V. Lee read some prose in 1888, becoming an active participant in one of Professor Caroline Scale's dramatic cultural presentations in 1900, joining the professors and their guests in 1914 for lively shore breakfasts along the shores of Lake Ontario, working the desk at the Oswegonian in 1940, making history as the campus community buried its first time capsule in 1951, participating in the Penfield Library Book Brigade of 1961 as students and faculty moved books from Sheldon Hall to the new library in Rich Hall, building a geodesic dome in 1974, while world-renowned science icon and inventor of the dome, Buckminster Fuller, was visiting the campus. Volunteering in 1984 to become part of SUNY Oswego's Student Association Volunteer Ambulance Corps, SAVAC. Joining resident artists in 1996 to enhance the cultural environment through the Arts Wego initiative. Listening to Washington Post editor Ben Bradley during the school's first media summit in 2005 or cheering on the Lakers men's hockey team as they capture their first NCAA championship in 2007. The nurturing relationship between faculty and students has always been one of the hallmarks of the Oswego experience. A few years ago, 1950 graduate Marsha Belmar Willock pledged $1 million to create the college's first endowed chair in the finance program of the School of Business. Willock encouraged all graduates to give back to Oswego because of the foundation for success that an Oswego education provides. This sentiment of giving back has been expressed since the earliest days of the campus, as clearly illustrated in this 1899 photo depicting students and faculty members volunteering their time as part of the life-saving core of the American Red Cross. Collegiate life at SUNY Oswego has always included culture and the arts. The spirit of a costumed production in 1892 and the swirling energy of a 1959 freshman dance class continues today with a contemporary take on Dracula. The vibrancy of the college orchestra in 1912 under the direction of Charlotte Waterman lives on through SUNY Oswego College Community Orchestra. Living in a college community means forging meaningful, lifelong relationships. Today, the seeds of friendship and collegiality take root in college housing environments like the village. But those earliest ties began at the school's first student housing, the Welland Hotel. As one 1914 Normalite fondly recalls, what pleasant days we spent at the Welland, a home away from home. We Welland girls were not exclusive, for we enjoyed many a Saturday picnic or just afternoon shopping or a matinee in company with our Oswegonian schoolmates or out-of-town girls who preferred living with private families. Other avenues for early Normalites to strengthen their bond with one another were through clubs, intramurals, and athletics. 
As a strong proponent of physical activity, Edward Austin Sheldon put in place a set of values that encourage students to balance their schoolwork with exercise. It's a perspective that has forged a special relationship between the students, the faculty, and the community. Tragedy has also brought the college community together over the last century and a half, remembering the soldiers of World War I and withstanding an outbreak of Spanish influenza which followed that war, helping put people back to work during the Depression with public works projects, honoring the memory of a fallen Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968, taking part in a vigil after the Pan Am tragedy of 1988, and after the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. These and other life-changing moments were met with a unified Oswego spirit, a spirit that would not and could not be broken. Student activism over war, the environment, and social justice issues in the areas of race, health insurance reform, religious discrimination, and poverty have also paved the way for changes within the Oswego community and beyond. Yes, the world has changed dramatically over the last 150 years, and SUNY Oswego with it. In order to promote an understanding of different cultures, the college has taken the lead in sponsoring a wide range of overseas academic programs for students in Europe, Latin America, and Asia, along with volunteer efforts in places like Jamaica. And as interest increases in the world beyond the United States, the international dimensions of the curriculum will be further developed to include international studies programs in a number of majors and minors. With all that has transpired since 1861, there is one SUNY Oswego experience that would most certainly be shared by most, if not all, SUNY Oswego alumni. Lake Ontario. It creates both spectacular sunsets as well as snow, and lots of it. During a blizzard in the late 1800s, Edward Austin Sheldon found himself stranded and remarked, our little home came very near to being buried. The snow was so deep that the founder could not locate the gate to his home. No gate was to be seen, however, and upon putting out my hands to climb over what appeared to be a bank of snow, a head with two horns came up into the air before me, loaded with snow. Sheldon's early encounter with a cow is just one of volumes of stories that could be written about the whiteouts that halted college operations and blanketed campus grounds over the years. Some of these storms, like those in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, literally shut down the community for several days. But if you ask any Oswego student, it was just another adventure along the shores of the Blue Ontario. Most that enroll will find a home, a shared community, and a place to realize their dreams. <laughs>